All right, boys, so here's the before. You can see this um, trim potentiometer. Um, everything I did, I would always get 1.1 volts less than my input voltage at the output, no matter what I did. I don't know if it's a faulty board or what. This is the MT3608. So, I don't know what they did wrong, but what I can say is the fix was to desolder that trim potentiometer. We desoldered it, and you're left with three empty pins where it used to be. You run a jumper from the, the upper left pin to the bottom pin, and then you run a resistor between the top two pins. Now the resistor value, I'll go through how to calculate that next. The resistor value I chose is 47k ohms. And with that resistor value you get approximately 13.4 volts at the output, it's fixed. That's never going to change. And it, it fixed it. It works now. So I was going with a 3.7 volt lithium ion battery as the input battery, and the output was um, 3.6 volts. So it was 1.1 volts less than my input, always. And once I removed the potentiometer and I put this resistor in and this jumper in, everything started working. This, this line runs through here, across this, doesn't touch any of these two parts. And then it hits this bottom left pin, which is the um, FB pin, which takes um, the voltage divider, and it uh, sets what the output voltage will be. And that's configured by this resistor and this big resistor I put in. This resistor is R1, and this resistor is R2. This is 2.2k ohms, and this is 47k ohms. Okay, now to do the calculation on it, the formula, according to the data sheet, was you, the V output, which I personally wanted to be cl as close to 12 volts as possible, but it didn't really matter if it was a little over or whatever, which is the case here. Um, equals 0 0.6 volts times 1 plus R1 over R2. Now we know R2 is 2.2k ohms. And we know R1 is our X. We solve for X. So in my case, I did... Um, Forty-seven k ohms. So you just do forty-seven. Oh, let me type this for you guys. Hold on. Okay, so this is the formula. You're trying to determine what you want this permanent resistor to be that you're adding in. I chose forty-seven. Um, basically. You just try different numbers until it gets close to the V-out you want according to the resistors you have on hand. So you're solving for X. If you want this to be 12 volts, let's say, you would do this. Um, 12 equals 0 0.6 plus 1 plus X divided by 2.2. Oh, I don't even know how, to, how you'd solve that. <laughs> Never mind. Um, yeah, you just trial and error, just adding, putting in different values here until it gets close on your calculator. So you just try 10, 20, 30, 40. Just try jumping around and, and just trial and erroring it. So you do like 10 divided by 2.2 equals plus 1 equals 
times 0 0.6 equals 3.32 volts would be the output of that. That's too low, we want to go higher. So then you'd try, like, okay, let's try 30. So then you go 30 divided by 2.2 .2 equals plus 1 equals times 0 0.6 equals 8.78 would be the output of that. Well, that's too low, we want it around 12 or higher. So then we'd do, okay, let's try 40 divided by 2.2 .2 equals 18.18 plus 1 equals 19.18 times 0 0.6 equals 11.5 would be your V out. That's too low, so let's try 45. 45 divided by 2.2 .2 equals 20.45 plus 1 equals times 0 0.6 equals 12.87. Perfect. And then you'd be like, well, I want it a little bit lower if I could get it just at 12. So then you try like, okay, let's try 43. So 43 divided by 2.2 .2 equals plus 1 equals times 0 0.6 equals 12.3. It's like, okay, that's perfect. So then you'd try to find a 43k ohm resistor in your resistor pile. And I only had a 39 and a 47. So then I tried 39 divided by 2.2 .2 equals plus 1 equals times 0 0.6 equals, that gave me 11.2. I'm like, no, that's too low. I wanted it a little over 12. So I went with the 47. 47 divided by 2.2 .2 equals plus 1 equals times 0 0.6 equals 13.4. So 13.41 is my final output. And I think it came out to 13.8, so the thing isn't working exactly as advertised there, but maybe because there's no load. Um, but it's close to that. So I went with 47k ohms and it worked and I showed you guys the configuration and that's the fix. And that's how you calculate what to choose your permanent resistor. I don't want to get into all the complications of how I calculated, um, like figured out which pin is what. I like stared at a bunch of diagrams and did a bunch of drawings and stuff for a long time. Finally uh, was able to figure out what each of the three pins does and trace it out on the board. Once the potentiometer is off, I was able to do little continuity tests of different points and just kind of figure out what's going on on this board and then eventually figure out where I want my resistor. And I tried counterclockwise 50 turns, whatever, clockwise 50 turns. I tried everything. I was just getting frustrated. I tried three different boards. I was just getting the same thing no matter what I did. It was always giving me 1.1 volts less than my input voltage. I tried a 2S battery pack, I tried 1S battery pack, nothing changed it. Um, so I just was reading and reading YouTube comments and there were some YouTube videos about this topic and just some people said just put in a permanent resistor there. So I was like you know what I'll just do that. So took out the potentiometer, I studied the schematics, I figured out what was going on, and I picked the right resistor, and I got it to output what I wanted. And so that's what I'd recommend you guys do if you're just getting frustrated and all the little tricks people say aren't working out for you or whatever. I just couldn't get the potentiometer to work for me. Now, it is a functioning potentiometer, but I feel like the way they wired it's kind of funky. I don't think they did the traces to it correct on the board. And one guy made a YouTube video saying, like, to put a jumper between, um, like, a couple of the pins on, the th of the three pins that stick out the back of the board from the poten the trimmer potentiometer, he said, like, to, to create a jumper between two of them. And it was, I think, the frontmost pin and then one of the back two. And I never tried that trick. I might try that some other time, but I don't even know if I will, because I kind of like my solution here, but, because plus it, you get to keep a free potentiometer. I mean, it's not the fault of the potentiometer, I, I don't think, in this case, although you could have broke it if you turned it too far one way, maybe, or something like that. I'm not sure, but, um, I mean, you get the free part, and you just use, use up a resistor, and you don't have to deal with this anymore. You just pick a resistor value, you can swap that out ever needed to change it but most likely you're putting this in something permanent installation anyway so you just don't have to worry about it 
So this is what worked for me. And now I don't have to junk all these boards. Everything will work now, I think.